The Sum of Islam. This video is suitable for all Christian denominations and doctrines, from Roman Catholicism to the organic church, as well as to Muslims that may be experiencing that first spark of personal conflict. Islam is increasingly a topic of interest, from billboards on buses advertising that Islam is just another Abrahamic faith, to church discussion pondering the same. Books are available but tend to unnecessarily complicate the subject. It is not difficult to understand Islam. A single verse from the Koran summarizes the religion. That they said, we killed Christ Jesus, but they killed him not, nor crucified him, but so it was made to appear to them, for of a surety they killed him not. Through this one verse, it becomes apparent that Islam is the direct opposite of Christianity, rejecting all of the prophets and apostles and the whole subject of the New Testament. No crucifixion, death, and resurrection, in spite of even the secular historical record of Jesus' crucifixion. The following verse is perhaps the most descriptive of and widely quoted in Christianity. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. No surprise then that Muhammad recited, They say Allah most gracious has begotten a Son. Indeed ye have put forth a thing most monstrous. Stunningly, if a Muslim confesses that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, he has committed the only unpardonable sin in Muhammad's religion, shirk, the perfect opposite of the New Testament. Whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, God dwelleth in him, and he in God. But Muhammad didn't stop there. The Jews call Uzair a son of Allah, and the Christians call Christ the Son of Allah. Allah's curse be on them, how they are deluded away from the truth. Allah's curse is to be on Jews and Christians. If Allah of Islam were the same as the God of the Christians and Jews, he would seem both schizophrenic and bipolar. Thus Islam is the only anti-another religion religion. In order for a Muslim to believe Muhammad's Quran and follow his 7th century standalone religion, it is necessary to believe that the Bible has been corrupted. Is it reasonable to suggest that the gospel was so corrupted that its whole subject was changed or added later? That the gospel had somehow become the opposite of what it had been? We have over 5,300 partial or complete manuscripts of God's word that were penned even prior to 300 A.D. in every popular language of the day that were read all over the known world. Discovery of the Dead Sea Scrolls at Qumran in the late 1940s also helped to confirm the textual integrity of God's Word as we have received it down through the ages. Indeed, God's people have followed Him for 3,500 years through His 1,600-year record of revelation to mankind. What does the Quran say regarding the gospel? Let the people of the gospel judge by what Allah hath revealed therein. So Christians are instructed to judge by the gospels. In order to support any suggestion of corruption of the gospel, it would have had to have taken place after the 7th century when Allah was supposed to have inspired that verse. A preposterous notion. Muhammad used the term people of the book in reference to Christians and Jews. O people of the book, stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all the revelation that has come to you from your Lord. Thus Allah confirms the textual integrity of the Old Testament, the law, as well as the gospel. Otherwise, it would be pretty foolish of him to recommend standing fast on all the revelation that our Lord gave us through a corrupt book. What instruction did Allah give Muslims regarding the Word of God? O ye who believe, believe in the scripture which he sent to those before him. Any who denieth his books, 
his messengers hath gone far, far astray. So even Muslims are supposed to believe in the scripture that God gave to those before Muhammad. Quite a conundrum. What does God's word say on the subject? He that believeth on the Son of God hath the witness in himself. He that believeth not, God hath made him a liar, because he believeth not the record that God gave of his Son. 1 John 2.22 Who is a liar but he that denied that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist that denieth the Father and the Son. Whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. The world is racing headlong toward the greatest tragedy in the history of mankind. Today, 1.5 billion people, one quarter of mankind, are in the grip of the 7th century Antichrist religion. For Christians with children, our kids' future is at stake. Learn about Muslim demographics. The only way to secure our children's future is to bring the Word of God to Muslims. If you believe there's some reason this message is inappropriate for your church, Bible study group, or simply sharing with friends, perhaps a review would help to determine the reason why. For printable, foldable shirt pocket size, as well as church program size, PDFs of the content of this video, links to those as well as the HTML text version of this video are available at the first link in the more info section at the upper right of this video at brotherpete.com. For an introduction to the Gospels, please click on the second link that takes you to islamandthetruth.com. And for in-depth discussion, please go to the third link to the chat forum at brotherpete.com.